So adult knowledge can be measured by acceptability judgment behavior, which is what Sprouse and colleagues in 2012 did in order to estimate adult knowledge of syntactic islands. They used something called magnitude estimation, which is a way of asking how much do you like this utterance? How acceptable do you find it? What magnitude of acceptability do you rate it, basically? And so they uh, did that for four different island types using what's called a factorial definition of the stimulus. So when you have a number of factors, you can vary which one has which value, and that's what it means to have a factorial definition. So they did that for islands, controlling for two salient properties of island crossing dependency. So one is the length of that dependency, was the gap of the WH word in the matrix clause, and another name for matrix is main clause. Uh, was it in the main clause or was it in the embedded clause? That's one factor. The second factor was the absence or presence of an island structure. That is the thing that you're not supposed to cross under the theory of syntactic islands. All right, so let's see what that looks like with a particular stimulus type. So this is with complex noun phrase or complex NP islands. That's what that NP is for there. And you can see here, we have an utterance, who claimed that Lily forgot the necklace? So we have who and its gap, which connects it to, is in the matrix clause, that main clause, even though you have an embedded clause later on in the sentence that claimed that Lily blah, 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 the gap is in the main clause. So you have a matrix dependency, and this is not an island structure, so a non-island a factor as well. Now if you want to vary with the length of the dependency, you can have that WH gap appear in the embedded clause. This is how we get what did the teacher claim that Lily forgot. So claim that Lily forgot, that's the beginning of your embedded clause, and you can see here the gap is inside it, so you've changed the length. Now what happens if instead of changing the length, you want to change in this case the presence of an island structure. So this right here, the claim that Lily forgot the necklace, Seems really close to these, but here this is actually an island structure. So here we have a matrix dependency, but now the utterance has an island structure in it. right? And then the last one is sort of our classic syntactic island where you have an uh, island structure present and you also have that WH word whose gap is in the embedded clause. So you have embedded and an island structure present. And these are your four stimuli that come from varying your two factors. And this is for the structure known as complex NP. And you can actually do this for a bunch of other island structures, which is what Sprouse and colleagues did in 2012. So they did it for things called subject islands, where you have, again, the same two factors, the same four stimuli types where the subject island structure is here, the necklace for blank, that's the subject. And so you can see here, who does Jack think the necklace for is expensive, that's your island stimulus, that it has both an embedded dependency and an island structure present. You can also do this for weather island, uh, so that's where you have the word weather sort of introducing your embedded clause, and here we have what does the teacher wonder whether Jack stole, which is both an embedded dependency and an island structure, but you can see again you can vary all your different factors. Uh, so that you can control the presence or absence of each of these factors. And then finally, we have adjunct island stimuli. So adjuncts, in this case, are words like if. So what does the teacher worry if Lily forgot, right, is your island crossing stimulus. So you have the island structure present, and you also have the WH word connecting up to that gap.